Mark Fixes Star. Well, here we go with another episode of Mark Fixes Star. Oh yeah, we're going to play on my Acorn Electron chain. Searching, looking for love. And now we're going to play the, uh, the WAV file I've created using some DJ software which allows me to adjust the pitch. But uh, we'll talk about that later. So we're loading Astro Plumber by Blue Ribbon. I'm really excited to play this. Loading screen. What? Uh, what's going on? Why is it black and white? It shouldn't be. I'm using this newfangled connection called a composite plug. Composite video signal. It should have colour in it. What's going on? Well, let's look inside. First, we'll remove four screws, which are located here, here, here and here. But here's one I took about earlier. I'm going to separate that unit and turn it over. Lifting it up rather rapidly, you'll find that you rip the ribbon cable in half. Yes, this dirty great big ribbon cable runs from the main board to the underside of the top shell, which goes into the, uh, the keyboard, which I have to say is much more robust than its Sinclair competitor. Even the ribbon cable, look, there's enough copper in there, you could weigh it in and buy a caravan for your ma. Yes, you could. It's even got a little punchy, sticky, unfathomably created ribbon cable. Right, so a quick search on the internet actually turns up that in order to make the composite output in colour, which you'd expect it to do normally, you need to make a link between LK4, two points which are located here on the board. So let's have a little close-up of that. Oh, I'm overshooting. Damn it. No, you stupid camera, that's LK1. It looks similar, but it's not the same. Alright, let's play the uh, lining up game. Where is it? Where is it? See above that chip down there? Can you see that? Yes, it's actually freeze that and you can see LK4. Let's go to Donna the Donor Board who will be giving us two jumpers. Now you could just solder a link across these two points but I'm quite anal about things like that and I like things to be reversible. So I'm going to steal two jumpers off of this old motherboard and solder them into the elk. Okay, you can see Donna's via bridge went pop through excitement of playing MAME. Okay, so let's pop this speaker off of there and hopefully at some point this hideous music will end. Disconnect the power supply. Try not to shock yourself there. And remove the screws out of the motherboard. Here we go. Oh, blood, uh, life goes on. Oh, life goes on. Okay. Has anyone noticed my rusty screwdriver? No, that's not a euphemism. It's just a rusty screwdriver. So, taking out the last screw now. Lovely. And that one can come out. Finish taking that one out, which uh, for some reason I didn't the first time. Lovely. And lifting the board out. Nice and simple. Now if we look at the underside, we'll be able to see the point that we're going for is here. Nice and easy. And uh, yeah, it's fairly simple to locate because it's two solder pads which don't have component leads coming through them. Let's have another Mr. Zoomy Zoomy moment. Zoom camera, damn you. It. Oh yes, zooming goodness. Okay, so you can see them right about here. There you go. Two solder pads with no legs coming out of them at all. Right, so uh, what I usually like to do is heat these from the underside so that I can get a grip on them with the solder sucker from the other side. Now I'm not going to bore you with my actual soldering in of the two legs. Needless to say I'm going to pop the jumper pins in 
and pop a jumper over the top of them so it's reversible um, I'm very much into the conservation of old technology especially when it's 30 years old I really don't want it to get um, put into a state where it's not going to be recoverable to its previous state so here we go you can just about see these jumper pins if I point them out with my finger there um, what we're going to do is pop a jumper on top and by the way the spacing on the board is exactly correct for this so there we go all things being equal we should have color when we go back to uh, loading up a game so here's a photo of where LK4 is in relation to the corner of the unit and a little zoom in there for LK4 you can see the jumper in place sorry the jumper pins in place without the jumper over the top next to that transistor okay well time to load something up here we go turn it on lovely little beep having killed it then uh, snow ah hello there how are you mr. acorn electron that's been 28 years <sighs> this chain using the hotkeys because I'm not an animal quote quote eventually when my hand catches up one handed typing I'm sure a lot of you are used to that on the internet over here where we've converted some electron tapes to web files and if you notice here I'm using some DJ software and the reason for that is I can put the pitch higher you can actually put the web file to play around 15% faster on most games and it will load successfully okay so we're going to load up blagger this time okay have we got color there you go lovely color straight out of the composite RCA and port excuse me hiccuping it's probably that lager so I'm going to bore you with this all loading here um, just another note there that the WAV file is playing at 15.82% faster than its natural speed as with all tape based software you need to kill all the bass and leave the mid range and high range as it is volume around three quarters and you should be able to load pretty much everything that way uh, okay and we're loaded up now time for blagger to beat me senseless Thanks for watching Mark Fixes Stuff. Hope to see you in the next happy, happy, joy, joy episode.